Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to talk about my old bow here, which I actually want to switch back to. So I've shot bows for over 16 years now and this was the bow that I bought quite at the beginning of my archery career and this bow is called Samic Sage, uh, sorry, it's the Samic SHT. Uh, it's a smaller version which has only 60 inches of height. So I think it's pretty good for smaller men and women, but if you are a big man with long arms, I don't think this bow is for you because then I would recommend that you get the Samic Sage, which is two inches longer. All right, and now I want to tell you why I'm going back to this bow here. So first of all, this is not the most expensive bow. This has very old recurve technology with only one bolt here and here. So you cannot adjust anything. You cannot um, adjust the limbs to the side, like with the newer systems. Also, these are old technology fiberglass limbs, which are not as fast as the new carbon foam limbs that you can now get. So why am I still shooting this bow? Why am I not switching to newer bows? Well, actually I've switched to newer bows and I've tried out many bows and those newer bows, they are great. I like them. But the problem is, I'm used to this bow here because I've shot this bow for over 10 years and somehow it has internalized uh, how I have to shoot with this bow. So I have better scores with this old bow than with the newer ones. And when I was trying out those new bows, I was always shooting too high because they were pushing out the arrow much faster than this old bow here and yeah it was really hard to adjust to the new uh, speed that is now the new normal in the archery scene so yeah I was doing I was shooting much worse than I usually shot and then I just came to realize that it's just best for me if I switched back to this bow here so if I was starting with archery right now and you haven't adjusted to any bow then you can go ahead and buy those super fast bows uh, if you want to save money Mandarin Duck is a very good company uh, you can get a very good and cheap riser from Mandarin Duck out of metal and they also have carbon foam limbs so if you want to get a fast bow um, do it okay but I myself have shot too many years with a slower bow like this one so i have a really hard time at adjusting to the new bow and honestly deep in my heart i don't want to adjust anymore i have found the perfect bow for me and now i just want to shoot this bow and switching out bows is not good for your accuracy in general because then you always have to adjust to a new bow and after half a year i got another bow then i had to adjust to this bow so I was never as good anymore as shooting this bow for over 10 years. And yeah, that's the, that's the reason why I want to switch back to a bow which is of older technology, but it's still a very sturdy bow. So the fiberglass is almost unbreakable and the wooden riser here is laminated, so it won't break. And it's a very sturdy bow and uh, what I also did was I have put on a bowstring which is a little bit finer than the old one. The old one was thicker and slower but this one now is um, has two strands less so it's a little bit faster and I kept everything in brown. Yeah there's a little bit of black on the limbs but doesn't bother me. So I tried to keep it as natural as possible so that I can use it for hunting. Then what I also did is I silenced the bow by putting a little bit of this white foam in between the frame and the limb so that you don't have this rattling sound. Uh, I also put some string silencers on and then I have glued some velcro onto this curved part of the limb to make sure that the string hits the velcro instead of the plain fiberglass limb which makes a lot of sound. So right now, the bow is really silent. 
and it's much more silent than you can get a ILF system by the way so it's harder to silence ILF than to silence um, these old bows now I always need a hex key to disassemble the bow but I don't really care because I found out that I almost never disassemble the bow I just throw it in like this into the car and yeah I had to disassemble the bow once when I went to Africa uh, I took it with me in the luggage and that's another reason why I want to keep this bow because in Africa I shot a ray shark in the sea that was my one and only hunting experience that I have with a bow uh, unfortunately bow hunting is illegal in Austria so I only shoot at targets 3d targets and targets at the range I just love shooting bows and arrows and it makes a lot of fun and it's also a good survival skill that you can learn all right so now I want to go to the archery range shoot a couple of arrows and then we are going to hit the 3d parkour all right so here we are at the shooting range and this is really one of my favorite shooting ranges because it's super big and you have many targets to shoot at and this is what I do before I hit the 3d parkour so if you're interested in this place this is in Wellersdorf and I will put a link into the description below all right so first error of the day the distance is 10 meters Okay, that's good. Okay, so now I want to shoot at a very short distance, and that's a thing that a lot of archers neglect. But sometimes you have to shoot at short distances, and it's really important to practice that as well. 15. now 20 meters <sighs> 30 meters <sighs> nice okay I think that's all right for 30 meters it's really long a long distance Okay, now I want to do a quick animal round. Okay, I was a little bit high on all targets. Okay, so finally I'm ready for the parkour. I'm already at the first target. And actually I really recommend that you practice on a parkour because it's the closest experience that you get to a real hunting experience. That's a dead beaver. And here I shot a little bit to the right, but I think it would still have been deadly. Okay, there's a penta at 25 meters. Yeah, <laughs> nice. You could have wished for a better uh, shot. The arrow is even touching the kill zone, which is the very small ring here. We got a chamois at 18 meters. I cannot believe it! I hit the kill zone again! <laughs> yeah guys, so this is what I'm telling you. I'm shooting so much better with this bow. Okay, the next target is really difficult. So, first of all, it's going up quite a lot. And the target is really small at 18 meters. So this here is a eagle. Oh gosh, I think I shot too high. Okay, let's check out the target because I cannot see where I shot exactly. 
Oh my god, this is so steep. So as you can see, I only hit the wing. And I'm always too high with this target. Okay, the next target is a bison. It's about 35-ish meters away. Ah, let's check the distance, I'm not sure. Oh, it's only 32 meters. <laughs> Pretty good. So that was a really nice shot. I even hit the first ring here. I've made a neck shot and I was pretty high because the target was going down so much and I always shoot high at this target. Here we have a baby hawk at 18 meters. It's a small target, it's really hard to hit it. Okay, now come my two favorite targets, but first I have to make a pause because I'm exhausted, it's so hot. Another heat wave today, I'm going to take off my shirt. Ugh. Yeah, if I was a guy I would take off my shirt as well, so I'm not doing it for the views. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. So, while I'm making the pause, I want to talk about my equipment that I have with me. Kannst schießen. Ich nette die aus. <laughs> so, um, first of all, I have the range, uh, laser range finder with me. So, personally, my range estimation skills are not the best, but I'm getting better because I have this now. And every time I estimate, I'm getting better and I develop my skill a little bit better. Okay, then next, I have this uh, thing here, which is a measuring tool. So, you can measure the brace height. So now I have a little bit less brace height than when I started, which is sometimes happening to bows. And that's because the string is stretching during um, the use. So what I really want to do now is I want to tighten the string a little bit. And for that I'm having this bow stringer here, which is really important. So in the past when I was starting archery and bow and arrow shooting, I often strung the bow over my knees and legs but that's not good for the bow because you're going to twist the limbs and it didn't happen to this bow actually. Um, it seems as if these limbs are a little bit more sturdy, they can take a lot of abuse but it happened to other limbs from other brands and companies that I don't want to mention now. So yeah, use a bow stringer. Otherwise, it's your own fault if the limbs are twisting. So I just give the string three more twists. Now let's see. All right, so now it's perfect again. My brace height is 20.5 centimeters or eight and one eighth of an inch. Okay, the next target is a sheep at 25 meters. And then there's another sheep at 38 meters. Ah, I missed! Hit. Just missed the first ring. Here was far too high as well. Okay, so it's really important that you check the arrow after every hit at a stone or in the soil, because if you have a crack, uh, somewhere you should not use the arrow anymore because otherwise you risk a serious injury so if you launch a cracked arrow from the bow uh, you are risking eye injury and all kinds of other injuries if the carbon arrow breaks so make sure you check all of the arrow so this one is fine <laughs> I don't know I always hit the throw today. Yeah, good shot. I just missed the first ring by one millimeter again. Okay, so far I only missed one target, which is my personal best. And yeah, I'm pretty good at hitting the target, but I could be more accurate. Oh my God, now comes my favorite 
target or unfavorite target. <laughs> yeah, such a great shot. Nice, really nice shot. It's the second ring. Okay, so now I want to shoot at this pigeon, which I really hate. The distance is about six meters. I take one more arrow. <laughs> okay, I hit the pigeon with the second arrow and the first one is gone. Let's check out the other arrow. It's in the crevasse. Oh my god, it survived. Okay guys, I cannot believe it, but the wooden arrow survived a hit on the stone. Unbelievable. Okay, I gotta say this is a pretty awesome target. It's hanging. A hanging bat or flying dog. Okay, and this is the bird, Auerhahn. And here I was a little bit too low because I had a very bad release, so it was really my mistake. Okay, this bear is at 35 meters something. Okay, I gotta say, I'm really proud of this shot. It's 35 meters. I hit the bear at a very good spot. So I hit the first ring, not too bad. So I got interrupted by the squirrel and actually I would love to hunt the squirrel but they are protected in Austria because the small European red squirrel is close to, it's not close to extinction but we don't have too many anymore. So I guess it's a lucky day for this bugger. Okay now I have to do a second shot on the bear because I missed the first one. Right in the middle, cannot believe it. I hit the second ring. Okay, the next target is for uh, people who don't care about their arrows. It's a small bird, 15 meters of distance, and the back wall is stone. And here it says, you cannot buy bravery, but you can buy arrows. Oh my God, <laughs> I missed the target. <laughs> Goodbye. Is this a tip? I don't know. So that's a really hard target. I gotta try again. I have to. I have to get better. I was really sweating. <laughs> Lucky me. Oh. Okay, here I missed the first shot, but the second one was really good. So now I'm getting unconcentrated, so I have to slow down a little bit. I still have many more targets. Okay, this was right in the kill. Nice. And the bobcat was okay, but a little bit high. Okay, now we have the zebra at 47 meters. Hit! Belly shot. I hit the first ring. Nice. <sighs> Low. Okay guys, I just shot one arrow without recording it of course. And it was a pretty good um, target for me because I hit this lynx here at this spot and the lynx was 25 meters away so pretty good shot no i missed i hit okay the first one was a miss and the second one was not too bad all right so this was the last target it was 23 meters away and I'm pretty proud of my shot because the target is really small and I hit the first ring again. So I'm happy with the shot. 
Nice fox. <laughs> All right, so after this round, I gotta say, I made the right decision to go back to my old bow. Um, I've only shot this bow now for uh, three or four times in the last weeks. And before that, it was sitting in the corner for a couple of years. And yeah, in between I shot it with a aiming device, but now I've taken that off and now I only shoot it over the shelf anymore. You can install an arrow rest, but I took it down because I think it's not necessary. So that's really your own personal choice if you want to have an arrow rest or if you want to shoot the bow over the shelf. And right now I just like this way better. And yeah, I think my uh, shooting today was good. It could have been better. But for the fact that I haven't shot this bow for a very long time on a regular basis and for this old style of bow I think I did a good job today and yeah I really love this bow and I think I'm going to buy a second one because I don't know if they are going to produce this model uh, in future again so I definitely want to buy one more model the same exact model like this bow here but just new and I want to keep it in case that something happens with this bow you can lose it it can get stolen out of your car so if that happens I just want to make sure that I have a second bow like this one at home and even if I don't use the second bow I can always lend it to a friend or you know give it to somebody else yeah in future I'm also going to use other bows again but I know when it comes down to practicing for myself and when it comes to a real survival situation or surviving the apocalypse, this would be the bow of my choice. Okay, enough of talking. I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned till next time.